my legs feel tired and aching all the time. So I'm presuming I should go to the GPs with this. Leanne, I'll, I'll, I'll take this one just to begin with. But again, you know, there are lots and lots of causes. And I think, you know, you will be the person who is seeing them when they have been referred. So feeling tired, it's not not at all uncommon. Firstly, you know, overuse. But underuse, actually not using them enough can make your legs feel really tired. Muscle cramps can cause real tiredness. Um, so a lot of my patients will have night cramps in particular. And there are there are lots of lots of things that you can do to help that, for instance, stretching exercises and so on. Low levels of potassium can sometimes cause aching. But actually, tired legs, probably the two things I see, I don't know about you, Leanne, but the two causes I probably see most common as causing tired legs are one poor circulation. So again, going back to chronic venous insufficiency, um, but also varicose veins, they can cause real, real issues. I mean, it may be a normal part of aging, but it can be due to either problems with your arteries or to problems with your veins. And, and another one, that, Sarah, that I hear commonly, which I'd really be interested in your opinion on, is a lot of my patients think it's the statins that's causing their aching of their legs. And their yes. first thing to do, even if they've got a diagnosis of peripheral arterial disease, and having that pain when they're walking, as you said, intermittent claudication, they read the packet on the side of the statins and stop the statins because one of the side effects that's reported is achy legs. What's, what's your take on that? So I think we need to remember that we give statins for a reason. And there has been one of the reasons that there's been so much interest and so much publicity about statins is that, let's be honest, the newspapers know everybody's interested because they are the second no, they are the most commonly prescribed drug in the UK. The second most commonly prescribed is anti-indigestion medicine, which probably tells you everything you need to know. The first, the most common drug is the one to reduce our cholesterol, um, mostly because of, because of lifestyle. And the second most common is the one to reduce indigestion. So there's a, a, a concept we all know about the, the placebo effect. And the placebo effect is where you think you're going to get better and therefore you are. And that's why when drugs are studied, they always have what's called a double blind. That means neither the doctor nor the patient knows which drug they're taking. Now, to put this into perspective, the flip side of that, it's what's called the nocebo effect. And that is the side effects that you get if you think you might be taking a tablet and you think it might cause side effects. And in some studies, more than one in four people have had to stop the placebo drug, which is basically a sugar tablet, which doesn't contain anything because they've had such bad side effects from it. There have been huge amounts of pros and cons, ups and downs looking at statins, but we now have studies on hundreds of thousands of people. But one of the most, the most um, impressive studies from my perspective was a study where they took the same very large group of people. Firstly, they gave people um, the drug, or the placebo. And the number of people having severe muscle aches was virtually identical in both groups. Then they went into an open label extension where people knew if they were taking the statin. And suddenly the number of people who got the muscle aches went through the roof among the people who were taking the statins. And I think that really tells you everything you need to know. If they didn't know whether they were taking the statin or not, but they thought they might be, the number of people getting side effects was very similar. Now, that does not undermine the fact that a tiny proportion of people will get a very rare side effect called rhabdomyolysis, which is a very severe muscle wasting condition. But it is extremely rare, particularly at standard doses of statins and particularly with people who are otherwise healthy. But you're absolutely right. I have lost count of the number of patients I've had who've stopped taking their statins as a result. The other thing to bear in mind, of course, is we state, take statins as a preventive medication, which means success is measured by nothing happening. So, of course, people take it, and they go, well, how do I know I'm getting any benefit? Well, you won't until you stop taking it and you have a stroke or a heart attack. But actually, we have now got so much evidence in favor of statins and the vast, vast majority of statins, um, pretty much all statins actually are now off 
patent and therefore there is no question no gp is giving them because they're being paid to give it or because they're making any profit these drugs are i would say as cheap as chips but they're probably cheaper than chips given that the, the recent inflation in, in food prices recently they are incredibly um, low cost, no pharmaceutical company is making huge amounts of money from them. And yet doctors are still convinced by the evidence. Do I take them? No. Have I been assessed to see if I need to take them? Yes, absolutely. Would I take them if I needed to? Yes. And if you need any more, any more convincing on that, does my husband take them? Yes. And no, I don't want to kill him. <laughs>